Ta-dum, ta-dum. <laughs> you can't walk like that on set. The whole point is to show your shoes. Please, can you do it again? You walk oh, too fast. Yeah. Slower. I even had a nice little song thing for you. Don't do the wedding da, song. Da, okay. I don't know what the Queen Elizabeth song do is. Do something else. Ding, ding, ding. You're still walking like slowly. Oh, wow. Look at her shoes. Wow. You can add. I can add. Just slowly. The whole point is to indulge in the shoes. Okay, fine. Welcoming Miss Mandisa no, Mashiro. I just want to walk in without the welcome. I'll keep quiet. Oh, I was told to walk slowly. Hi, Mandisa. <laughs> how are you, Pen? I'm all right, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. Welcome back on, on the panel show. Uh, a lot of people to this day, when they meet me, they still remember our first engagement. Yo, oh, Pluasisi. Lo waelo anawe. Yo, 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 yo. Society is so patriarchal. Women How? are more patriarchal than men. When a man is injured, the first people to cry are the females. <laughs> Ooh. Penuel. You know, when Penuel is rude and makes sexist and condescending and completely even illegal comments about illegal. women, you know, everybody claps hands because he has a dick. Thank you so much for coming back. And I really enjoyed the first time you came here, even though we've had a couple of engagements together. Um, it's desperately, desperately important that you keep coming back here because I think people now know that you are walking library. Um, I think you're a political animal, you know, and I fundamentally believe and hope actually that you will in one way or another re-enter the, the political space because we need you. <laughs> would you would you would you do i need you, do you how <laughs> i mean you in the plural sense i mean oh. we both did english first language at school come on do you think you'd be able to run this country of course it's the easiest thing to do to run south africa you just need to get saps right the judiciary the npa and everything that works within them their context in terms of security and governance and uh, the criminal justice system that's the first and major thing that needs to be done if you look at escom for instance everybody now knows um, that the problem at escom is cadre deployment not just to the executive or the board or um, the, the 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 top management no the rank and file workers so if you look at the, the 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 what do you call it the labor relations or not labor relations the recruitment processes mm. and you look at also recruitment processes more importantly in relation to contracts mm. um in any space by the way but primarily in infrastructure in the construction space um if you are building let's say a bridge uh, that's going to go across whatever area and it cuts through certain wards that are residential areas. Mm. You would need uh, what they normally call, uh, what do they normally call them? You would need to appoint a, 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 almost like a facilitator, a community liaison, mm. sort of, right? To basically, you know, work with the, if there's a ward committee, because some wards, some municipalities have ward committees, some municipalities don't. Metros in the large uh, towns generally have uh, ward committees. So yeah. you have the ward council and then you have the ward committee. So those kinds of um, a community liaison responsibilities for infrastructure and massive, uh, let's say, development but in the built environment uh, require that the company, the, the or whoever, let's say the contractors, right? Mm. Whether it's a consulting um, engineers or the entire team, right? That's going to be doing the work, including the the probably the municipality if it's a municipality. And the, there's always a municipality, even if it's a national project, for argument's sake, or it's a housing project that's overseen by the province, which normally happens. They are required to consult the community and engage, and na 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 na. But also, they are required to do the procurement of labor the recruitment through this process mm. right and now we know what happens so you can almost guess it doesn't matter whether it's a private sector project right uh or it's a, a government an outright government project where there's no private sector involvement and government is paying for that project by themselves they they still have to do this public liaison mm. and then employ you know probably your what the americans call blue collar workers your laborers um from bottom to top and um 
that process plus the process of subcontracting, mm-hmm. right? So those both those processes is involve um, recruitment of labor. So the subcontracting, they're having to employ uh, general workers is in South Africa, they're called blue collar workers, are called general workers uh, in the labor space. Um, that process results in, is, is driven by corruption, all forms of corruption, mm. top and bottom, right? So if that ward, um, and, and, and all political parties do this, it's almost like this is what's supposed to happen. And the, it's a, the cadre deployment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, I mean, cadre deployment is entrenched in the Electoral Act. We've spoken about this before. It's entrenched in the ele- Electoral Act. When the Electoral Act or the Electoral um, Commission Act, the IEC Act or the Electoral Act says that a party must submit a list that basically, that just that little short sentence is mm. where the problem lies. That is the sentence that tells you that um, the, there is no other way of putting, for instance, MPs, MPLs, and councillors, uh, PR councillors at least, um, you know, in council mm. because you would have voted for the party. The party gets its allocated uh, number of seats and then allocates according to its own list, right? So that's where the KW deployment problem starts. It starts right from the oversight of government that, that is in the legislature. But there's nothing wrong with KW deployment. The I problem am, is that- I'm sweating now, as you can see. Do you need something? Yes, I need a towel. Can I get one for you? Yes, my towel is over there. I hope we're pausing. I told you that I've got hot flashes, so my face just literally... No, no need to pause. Oh, shit. No, sorry. I need to go. Sorry. That's what happens when you go through... That's why women can't be president. (laughs) Are are we pausing or we continue rolling? Continue rolling. Leave it. We need to open the door. Can you open the door? Is it too much for Sana? I, I don't think we're gonna have a choice because we've been shooting for like two minutes and she's sweating badly and her eyes are clouding. So let's let's open this door and see if it works and open the windows. Let's open that. You have an issue using the towel on camera. Of course. Because we can't keep. I'm a, I'm a lady. We can't we can't keep pausing. So yes, and this house. is real. Like this is real. Did you say you're nervous? <laughs> no, it's hormonal. Oh. No, no, no. I was. I, you had said something about nervous. I was just trying. I'm to gonna sit down, maybe. <sighs> Did you say this is why wo- women can't be presidents? <laughs> yeah, because you'll be on heat during a cabinet <laughs> meeting, and now everything must halt because I you're think so. heating up. Just I think I need to start getting on. those medicines that they recommend. Okay. I just don't Let's want them. Now, you just uh, that means we must move. <laughs> <coughs> or maybe if I could get like something like something I could fan myself with. That's gonna be much better. Huh? Ah, so much better. Let's try it. And the front door as well, please. Yeah, no, please open. You really want us to edit this out? No. Yes, of course you need to edit it out. Are Why? you still recording? Yes. Why? This is good content. No, 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 no. I'm not an actress. I'm an actor. It's not about acting. This is real life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this, I don't People want my real life. People need to know. I don't real life there. No, no, it's my hormones. I'm sweating because I've got, what do you call it? Hormones. Look, it happens when women start hot staring flashes. at me. Look, it happens when women start staring at me. It's called hot flashes. When women start staring at me, they tend to start sweating. So I understand. Could you okay. break down hot flashes? I think we're good. I think I'm just playing this term. Okay. Oh, unconditional, I do it on camera because I do want to explain this to all South African men because okay. the level so, of your so ignorance We're going gonna, we're gonna to keep all of this. No, no, no. I, I keep hearing it. I don't know it. I've never had it. Okay, okay. if you want to continue, I'm fine. So we're not, we're, 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 we're not going to edit anything out. Sure. Maybe you will, but we can carry on. So Sorry. I was explaining to you about Apologies. the jobs thing and the, the cadre deployment. That's you the, can you can keep it close yeah. to yourself. That's basically the ANC's version of... Um, of the, the National Party's Rakhstalanda Aksi policy, except they are doing it in a way that it has no respect uh, uh, for, for, for meritocracy, for mm. ability to actually do the work for outcome, right? It's all about, uh, you know, 
getting the money. You know how as black people we have a problem with wanting to earn money without understanding that earning money is about doing work. <laughs> or we want to get paid, but we without get earning paid. it. Yeah, we, without earning yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. Because yeah, the meaning of earn is actually working. Mm. So that's, it's, it's result, it's effort and result. There's nothing wrong with catered deployment. There's something wrong with deploying caters that are not qualified and competent to do their work. Do you agree with that or do you just generally have an issue with catered deployment? I have a big, you can't Even do, when the person is qualified? Catered deployment robs the country and society of talent. Mm. And it robs society of uh, honest work, of values, of ethics, of morals, right? Mm. Because what happens is when you're looking for the best person to, you know, do whatever, you know, fix this microphone and make sure that it's in the right position. You need to get the person who understands the technicality of the job that he needs or she needs to do mm. best. And also somebody who is creative enough, innovative enough, not entitled, hardworking, committed, ethical, committed to the greater good of everybody in the room, right? You're not going to get that kind of person with cadre deployment. The second problem with cadre deployment is that it, it the intention is good. Yes, we all know, like, like, affirmative action the intention is good and the intention it's ne is necessary it's, it's the same as the 50 50 principle mm. that is applied in government positions to 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 help bring women up mm. but what happens with the 50 50 principle is that if to, if a woman is is in is is, is provenly um uh, capable of doing her work and the work that's that she's uh, hired to do and she's intelligent and she's creative and she's basically you know a, a, a blessing to her team mm -hmm. everybody hates her because of the patriarchal you know baggage that we have in this country both colonially and in relation to african patriarchy right um africanized patriarchy or rather what i normally call um cultural chauvinism which you guys are happier with because you're always happy when we criticize white men as being the sexist pigs that they are but you're not happy when we tell you that you are also sexist pigs sometimes even worse than white men because sometimes i find that white men have um sorry i got distracted uh, sometimes i find that white men because of the long and and, and elongated and uh, extended uh, feminist movement um, within their own European um, societies, white men s sort of tend to now, we are all, you know, experiencing the benefit of white men's, uh, uh, you know, let me say introverted sexism, which means they do not have the nerve and the goal that black men normally show of actually demonstrating their sexism, private, I mean, openly. Mm. They might, you know, do all their sexist and abusive stuff behind the scenes. Uh, maybe with their families where they know that they can take better chances and probably get away with it. But in public spaces, I mean, if you go to a lift or you go to an escalator, anywhere where there's a door, I bet you if there are black guys walking around you, you're going to fight to get to that door. Before, they, were literal, they were literally, listen, mm. I've been knocked over by black men so many times. Am I lifting in Asimnyang? And then I literally have to say, like, really? You're going to fight me now physically so that you get in through the door before me okay i don't know you you don't know me what's that all about where does it come from i so, do i do ask those crazy questions to black men sure. because they, also black men tend to think that and, and 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 excuse me for 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 generalizing but i'm a woman and i do experience men as a heterosexual woman so i think i'm more qualified than you know another man because i can sense a, a defense coming up <laughs> and i would not be shocked if it came up and actually i would be happy if it came so because i'm going to uh, so <laughs> my mission is to lap you <laughs> so so when you when you when you go to a lift or a door or whatever any any pathway that's going to narrow down and somebody needs to give way to another so if there are children i'm going to have to let the children go first whether those children are boys or girls if they are men and women, men will have to let women go first. When I go to my car and you walk me to my car, I expect you to open the door for me. I'm not interested in, 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 in crass feminism and crass perspectives of what feminism, because I'm not a <laughs> feminist, number one, I'm a womanist. But I, I, I also, as a womanist, firmly believe that we exist with men, and, with men in this world and 
for a reason. They are both genders in every oh, I suppose some animals can make themselves pregnant and they don't really have a gender. But it, it and even plants too. But by and large, we have two genders. We have males, we have females in across nature. And then of course we have hermaphrodites and whatever else. But the bottom line is if we are going to, for instance, do something about the excessive violence in society uh, against women, that becomes that is mostly economic violence. Like, like I was explaining earlier that, um, you know, why we need meritocracy so that we can get the best person in the room who can do the work. Why? Not just for now, but for posterity. The best person in the room will be the most innovative, will be the most informed, will probably do the most research into the work, will, will actually give the best and, and bring about the best outcome. Oh, sorry. I'd like to go back to the beginning before we carry on. Yeah. I'm going to put a pause there. I asked you if you believe you can run this country and you said... It's very easy. And you said we need to fix SAPs. Yeah. Uh, and the some other things. The criminal justice system, the entire criminal justice system. And I wanted to ask, outside of, let's say, catered deployment, what other issues do you see with some of those? And how would you propose to, to fix them if you were given power tomorrow? We just need to stop deploying people to anyway, starting with C the Catered risks. deployment is the beginning and the end of the issues. Well, no, but I mean... So no, I mean, by and large. I hear you, large. yeah. But for, for, if you're looking at, at South Africa and its current problems, yeah. the way they manifest themselves, mm. you know, um, there's, there's the infrastructure, right? Currently, infrastructure is a big issue besides electricity, right? Mm. So the first infrastructure that needs to go up when you're developing an area is electricity. And I learned this, is energy rather. I learned this from my dad because he was in the energy space for decades and uh, he's a bit of a genius. So... And <laughs> I think I was the closest. Kanye always loves saying his father was the Steve Jobs before Steve Jobs. You know, I, so it's my, interesting that you're saying your my dad, dad is, a genius. is is basically a genius. It's just that I suppose he was born at he was born in 1931 or nine, or he argues that he was actually born in 1929. Mm. But there are some people in the family who don't like me to talk about my father's age because it brings out other issues about mm. age gaps between two people in a marriage or something. Anyway. I'm, um, I'm just going to ignore that. Please carry <laughs> yeah, on. Yeah, ignore it. No, no, no. Yes, definitely. I mean, if you are... You, Catered well, deployment, again, if, sorry, if, if is you, not the problem. The problem is in, incompetent, inefficient people. No, the problem is catered deployment in the South African context. Is catered deployment not... Is it not directly because we vote for people? Like, how would you have a system of governance where people you voted for don't place their own people? Firstly, because I, I think by, by the fact that we vote already, we're saying you go with your people. No, you see, you and I keep having this conversation and I can see if it's going to take you this long to understand it properly in practice. It's going to take an average South African much longer. So we mm -hmm. have a much, much longer f struggle ahead of us. The problem is the electoral system. It's the whole system of how you vote and what happens after you vote. Mm -hmm. You need to vote for Penuel directly. Okay, let me go a step you do before that. that. If if you keep on voting for a political party the way you are doing now, yes, nothing is going to change. I mean, I kept on hearing people talking about after Cyril resigns or is uh, impeached or whatever, removed, you know, who would people like to see? I think I saw something on Twitter. They had all sorts of men lined up to say, oh, so-and-so will be a good president. I'm like... Where? In which way? Like, where would this person be a good president? What track record do how, they have? How, besides that, how mm. would they get elected? How, If you really so badly want this person and that person to be the president of South Africa, mm. why, why, why would you delude yourself into thinking that you actually have the power to make that person president? You don't. That's the simple truth. Like, South Africans don't like the truth. Mm. And, I, and I get it by how long it's taking you to understand this. And you and I engage on this quite a lot. And you're a very, very intelligent person. Like, you're super smart. You're like I'm a genius, super, like super your dad. Smart. Mm, no, no, you couldn't be so, a genius so like my dad. So, How much science do you know? Before, I'd have to get you in a room with my dad to figure out if you really are a genius. Because my dad is a natural scientist and mathematician. And I've met your dad and he loves me. You met my dad. I even forgot. That's how terrible so, my memory is. So, um, just for clarity. Um, he thought you were his son or something. Well, I if he's a so. genius and I'm a genius, it kind of makes sense. He saw himself in me. No, he, I just think he thought, hmm, could this be one of my sons? 
because <laughs> you know his memory is all gone anyway. So just just for clarity, <laughs> um, I think I do understand the fundamental need for electoral reform, and I think on my platforms I've been trying to speak about it. Um, but for the purposes, I think, of the platform, sometimes I, I think I'm expected to ask yes. some questions that people may have to try and get you to further elaborate. Um, I'm with you. Kind of situation. So we've got an issue of catered deployment, yeah. which I believe the reason it even is highlighted is because of incompetence, inefficiency, corruption. Yeah. If they were efficient, we wouldn't even think catered deployment. And violence. And violence. Yeah. We take a step back and we, um, I was saying, but these cadres are deployed because people vote for these political parties and it's almost expected that they will deploy their people. Yeah. And you're saying the issue is the way we vote in the first place. And, and that's where the electoral reform thing comes in. And we don't have electoral reform. We found out the way we vote is illegal, unconstitutional, etc. Now I want to take it even further than that and say, perhaps the problem is the people. So... We want things to change here, but maybe the problem is is actually here that we won't get electoral reform. Yeah. We won't vote for individuals or parties that are the right ones. Yeah. And even if we were to... Because my whole thinking is, I think if we fix this, yeah. if we vote for an individual or party, they will, even if they deploy cadres, yeah. deploy the right people. But because the problem is here, the people here can almost do anything they want. And it's almost like we can't hold them to account. And I think my question to you is, if you were to be president, of course, you probably think there could be better people to do the job, but how do you fix the the root cause? Because what if you're part of the problem? Yeah. You also deploy your own people and, and, and they're also corrupt and we have the same situation because it seems like the DA and the EFF and those guys just want to do the same thing just with their They people. are doing the same thing. I mean, l let's take the coalitions, for instance, and I'm okay, maybe let me answer your question and I'll come back to the coalitions and explain to you why a coalition government in South Africa is not is mismatched also with the Electoral Act as it is now, unconstitutional mm -hmm. as it is. Um the 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 you're absolutely right. The biggest problem is the actual system itself. It's the actual law itself, like many of our laws are problematic. And then it's also the fact that the citizens by and large do not know why they have this crisis because all they know, especially the black citizens, mm -hmm. and and, it, and it's important to say, especially the black citizens, because they're black the majority. People, we were not governing, we we're not co-governing in South Africa before 1994. So there's a lot of context we don't have to this thing that we just took over. Foot to it, right? Mm -hmm. As it was. But there's also the problem that the South African citizens do want to, they do want to understand, you know, what the problem is and what is it that they can do to make it, to make things better, not, not for everybody else, but for themselves, you know, mm -hmm. but they don't know what to do. They are disarmed. And the reason they are disarmed is because of this electoral, you understand, it's like a chicken and egg situation. Okay. If you, so, so look at it this way. If you if you if don't change if 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 the if the ANC and all the parties in parliament currently, especially those serving in the Home Affairs Committee that is overseeing the process of uh, the bill amendment process, um, as as per the Concord judgment, if um, if if those people who are sitting in those committees, all the MPs in parliament, if none of them, the speaker, all of them, if none of them were actually put on a party list and deployed, mm. they would not be able to deploy either, whether okay. to government departments, they would not be able to sit in a meeting in the ANC office or any of the political parties or whichever dirty corners they sit in and then exchange briefcases and say, listen, those, con those conversations sound so nice though. But that's exactly what they do. That's exactly what they do, <laughs> except that it's worse than just that. Mm. La in Zabo are not qualified. That's the most heartbreaking. Majority part. of them have got fake degrees. Yeah. You know currently that UNISA is being investigated. There's a fancy term that they have for it, but if you can contact the Council for Higher Education and that tag blades a man and ask him to give you an update on the investigation underway into UNISA. Because UNISA is becoming like, you know, these Nigerian universities Aye, that you just can't rely on because you, they have no, um, um, they have no uh, objective, um, what can you call it? Like they, have, they are not, um, 
they, they, accredited? They're not legit. Right. Not accredited. Yes. No, no, no. They can be accredited. UNISA is accredited. UNISA, the vice chancellor of UNISA serves probably in the National Council of, of Higher Education, like all other vice chancellors of the public universities. Mm. There's no accreditation. They are accredited to whoever, international, whatever. What rescues them is this uh, veneer of credibility. But UNISA currently is being investigated. For, for being a fly by For night. fake degrees. <laughs> for people who sit and write exams for others or even the entire curriculum for producing. Uh, I mean, they, one of the big things is that, you know, UNICEF is a, is a distance learning university and it was invented by the apartheid government, right? Or created by them. But now UNISA is no longer a, a long distance, a distance learning university. UNISA now has got actual classes operating squarely and outside of their mandate. Any government entity uh, act, uh, must operate according to the law, which is an act that governs it. So let's say uh, you have the Department of Environmental Affairs and Tourism. It's a government department, right? It, that There's an act for Department of Environmental Affairs and Tourism. Then under that, they will have statutory bodies like the Tourism Grading Council. They will have South African tourism, whichever statutory bodies that belong to them, which means companies or agencies that operate as private entities, as businesses, but being with the government department, being a 100% shareholder or 80% shareholder, like Airports Company, et cetera, et cetera, ESCOM, all of them. Now, <laughs> the, 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 the act that governs now South African tourism is, a, is an act that is derived from the Department of Environmental Affairs and Tourism Act, which is the government department, and the South African Tourism as the, as the, as the statutory body or the company has got its own act, right? And it must comply with it. UNISA does not comply with the Education Act, with its own act that stipulates that it is a distance learning. University would, would have been perfectly evolved now, you know, with the post-COVID environment where everybody is not like, doing everything almost online meetings, et cetera, which would have been a perfect, perfect opportunity. So they're under investigation for a lot of things and corruption. And there's a fight uh, at, uh, at, at the ANC level uh, nationally um, for, for, to, to, to basically colonize all the tenders at, at UNISA. But this happens, I, I was just making an example of this. This happens at every other public university where the minister, the deputy minister and all the chief honchos in the Department of Education, and I'm making an example of education, then have excessive power that starts in the Council for Higher Education and then it filters down. They have the power to even deploy vice chancellors. You know, vice chancellors are very politicized and very political figures. True. Um, and, and, um, All and, of them. And, and the biggest, biggest, uh, the core focus of those battles is, uh, is the tenders of the, of the university. I, I'm going to be soon doing a discussion on, on my platform with... Um, What's the name of your platform? Um, rise and sparkle. <laughs> Beautiful. Congrats, by the Miss way. Miss Ungovernable, of course. No, oh, that's probably Definitely better than Rise and Sparkle. Miss Ungovernable, yeah. Sorry to, to deviate. I'm asking a, a, a question with an assumption. Why do you think the majority of our citizens are not focusing and passionate about capacitating themselves with real skills? You've got a company that you've got a country that's up for grabs, you've got an economy that's up for grabs. Yeah. Parastatals, treasury, tax coffers. We speak about catered deployment, corruption, etc. Why are the majority of the people not interested in really, really understanding the work? Understanding the work that's needed to build power stations, airports, aeroplanes, to build great infrastructure. Why are they not invested? Why is everyone almost doing the bare minimum, if that at all. And they're almost happy to just get paid, whether it's a tenderpreneur or an employee or some as a lead department somewhere. Why is that, why do they not have a desire to just want to be good at what you do? Just be, <laughs> you've been in politics since 1994, at least be able to buy heart the constitution, be able to know some laws, be able to be like, I can read these reports with my eyes closed. I understand basic education, or blade. I understand it inside out. There's nothing you can tell me. Why do they not have a desire to learn the spaces they're in? And just, especially because you've been given time 
just to be competent. And you're getting paid. Just to be competent. Why, why do we struggle with that? At all levels, not just In government. South Africa, yeah? A normal employee who serves the KFC is not invested in learning how to make the chicken and the machinery so that one day they could potentially open their own. Why is there no desire to want to know more in the space you're in? Why is it enough to just serve a customer, be rude, mm. get your little salary, and then you know, you Savannah, with the camp chair by a dam somewhere? What do you think the problem is? It's an unfair question, as, I know. As, yeah, but I, I mean, we all think about this stuff and we talk about this stuff and we have these conversations every day of our lives, as, especially black people in the, in, the, in the so-called middle class. I mean, the biggest one is the struggle that I have with domestic workers. I have changed helpers so many times. And part of my problem was um, my own paranoia about my safety. Mm -hmm. Not knowing whether, you know, you know, like not wanting to get somebody from somebody else because then they recommend it. Then they, you know, so it's like, how do I get somebody cold faced? Like I must be somebody else and the person must look for a helper for me. When they come, I always try to empower them. You know, when they start working for me, I try to mm -hmm. empower them. One helper, I try to register with UIF. Like I try to do everything that I could with the little bit of, poverty budget that I have to say, look, let me make sure she has UIF. Let me make sure she is. And, and, she, and the person literally just, you know, the, the more you wanted to, I, you know, I try to open up the, the, the minds and hearts of the, 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 the helpers that I normally get, the more they reject my advances. And I, and, and it made These are South Africans. Some are South Africans, some mm -hmm. are, 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 are foreign nationals. Oh, recently I actually tried to hire one who was a foreign national. I said to her, look, I, I don't do illegal stuff generally as a person. <laughs> so I'm not going to engage in any legality. Please bring your working visa and mm. all your documents original. And then I make, make copies because obviously I work from home. I've got a printer. I'll make copies. And then we, you go and take them for certification. And then I'm going to subject you to a security test because I can't have you working in my house if you don't comply with the law because I have to comply with the law. I can't do anything. The Home Affairs has, has my fingerprints. Licensing department has my fingerprints. The banks have my finger. Like every freaking body has got my fingerprints. Even if I wanted to go and rob a bank, which sometimes I feel like doing, I can't <laughs> because I'm going to get caught so quickly. And yet this person is coming to my house and be illegal and now I'm subjected to insecurity. But nonetheless, the point is your question is exactly what stresses me out about a lot of um, black workers, because I I always want to, you know, to locate the problem as 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 microscopically as possible. Black workers and then black female workers have suffer a lot from what you've just described. Because we'll have to contrast with, let's say, white male yes, or yes. colored we have Indian. To. We have to. In why they are arguably better. What is it they've potentially we done? We have an attitude problem, right? So we have a poor work ethic. We have an attitude problem. We also have an entitlement problem, right? So black people, um, when we are at work, our levels of energy are always different. There are those people who, who, who like yourself, uh, like everybody that you work with in your team who's proactive, who's professional, who's courteous, who's, who loves their work, who actually mm. has a deep-seated root chakra-based passion for their work. And they, mm. they want to do better. They want to innovate. They want to grow. They want to contribute. They want to expand. They just want to be beautiful people. Mm. And then you get the majority of uh, black workers who basically have an entitlement problem right? They want to get paid. They are there. That's what I was raising earlier. Full stop. Yeah. yeah. And then they have also a personal, they are a risk to themselves, a danger to themselves because at all costs with minimum input, you know, in, in, in return for that, that, that money or those benefits or that salary. And there's also a second problem or third problem, which is not wanting to think you know i i have so many fights with people about thinking but it's like breathing it's one of the few things you do that you don't pay for it's like walking it's like why would you not want to be healthy why would you not want to exercise why would you not want to walk faster than you normally do why would you not why would you not want to think why would you not sit down and say you know what uh, let me try and think about Hmm, how does an aeroplane stay in the air? Whatever, right? Why would you not want to do that? You're not paying. It's one of the few things that we are now doing without having to pay anybody. It's breathing, it's thinking, it's looking, it's smelling, it's walking, it's hearing, it's feeling, it's whatever it is that is in your body. It doesn't require tax. 
Sorry, we deviated. Uh, you were speaking about coalition politics and why they are problematic. Yes, coalition politics are problematic because of the Electoral Act, right? So let's let, let me give you a, a classical example. We've got this disaster now that has just been unfolding in in, in KZN, and I think it eventually culminated in the removal of the the deputy um, mayor there, who, by and large, is also quite wrapped up in his own ego, to be quite honest, because um, the whole fight, when you listen to it. Mm. Uh, in 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 Etiwini is about the ego of the the, the ANC guy who's the mayor, mm. and then of course, unfortunately, you know when somebody's coming at you with an ego fight, you obviously also have to defend your own ego. So there's there's an ego, you know. It's about are you speaking about the floods or something else? No, no, no. I'm speaking about about why coalitions are, are such a problem. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you said there was a disaster in KZN. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the disaster in the municipality. Oh, the political disaster, political where the, disaster. the coalition agreement okay. has, has basically collapsed. They, sure. You know, the the, 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 the the ABC took the ANC to court and council, of course, because they have to, um, and the speaker's office, etc., and uh, won the case and the, and the judge ruled that um, they should, you know, they do not have the authority or should not legally, you know, remove this guy that they put as a deputy mayor because that was their coalition agreement. But you know where the problem is, why a court can't make political decisions, why it's very difficult for a court to actually, they can make political decisions, but they cannot go on the ground and make sure that those decisions are honored. Mm-hmm. Because of the because of, of 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 the nature of politics, but also by and large because of proportional representation, because of the deployment policy. So the coalitions, um, are currently being rendered dysfunctional mm. by the Electoral Act. And in fact, I, my argument would be, and, and it would not be a legal argument, I'd need a lawyer to come and make that argument legally and strengthen it. My argument would be that all the coalition arrangements that have been in place since 2016 have actually been unconstitutional. Anyway, the you know, governments have been unconstitutional, but that had to be put in abeyance and basically set aside because there's nothing you can do. Time has already passed. We've been operating under an illegal um, Electoral Act, an unconstitutional one. But those coalitions themselves fall under the same fate because the individuals taking the decisions going into the negotiations, the top six of the parties, if it's a metro, mm. because a metro reports to national, if it's a local municipality, it would be the top five or two of the provincial leadership and the regional leadership, is not representative of the voters. The voters voted, got a different outcome. Nobody won because obviously, and also the receding interest, the the, the, the declining interest in voting in South Africa also Mm. is a telling sign. But the voters have not been engaged and there's nothing in the Electoral Act that actually compels the, 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 the political parties to go back and engage the voters. The public participation that is mentioned in the, in the, in, um, in the rules of legislature and also acts that govern legislatures, and I need the towel again, are not enough to, uh, to guide and make sure that the outcome of coalition uh, discussions actually are the best outcomes for the citizens and not for the parties. What ends up happening is they trade off, like I was making the example of how CADA deployment destroys the country at top level. So I, I get appointed as a DG in your in a department where your mother is a minister and where my mother is a minister, you get appointed as a DG. And then after that, we, we, we start to exchange uh, corrupt procurement tenders and all of that. That's what the coalition agreements are by and large about. So which tender are you going to allow me if I give you this position? Which tender are you going to allow me if I give you this position? Will you vote with me when I defend XYZ corruption? Will you support us? No, 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 no. That those are the behind the scenes. Which positions in the exco am I gonna get for my people? Can I get the CFO? There's one party that's famously known to always just want the CFO. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm going to have to beg you to please dial it down to the most basic level. Okay. So, uko uko ona seventy, ingani na fourteen, are coming to see this clip that we are about to engage in now. And they're gonna see me with hot flashes and sweating like a pig, literally. Okay. Yeah. I, I need to understand. So I'm going to be their representative. I'm a 10 year old boy. Yeah. I need to understand the current voting system in South Africa, the current one. Yeah. So, oh, I can't wait till I'm 18 one day so I can vote. Yeah. What does my vote mean, number one, when I vote nationally, provincially? You can also explain that again, very basic. This is what you're voting for. 
please cover the wards. Please cover what you call proportional representation, which I still don't quite understand. Um, and I'm going to ask you questions because I'm 10 years old. So I'm, I'm confused and I don't know. And then after covering that, I'd like you to explain what we should have. Yeah. And what people should be fighting for, which is actually in the constitution. So what do we currently have now? What is voting? Yeah, so currently you're voting for a political party. So let's leave Please the, remember that I'm 10 leave, years old. Let's leave the word proportional representation out of it so okay. that it's, it's, it's simple. Um, a kid who is voting at 18 for the first time is voting for a political party. And I think everybody generally understands that. At so the, when you a, go to the elections, you vote for a political party? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you get your ballot paper, so they give you your yes. menu. Here's your menu. Here are all the political parties. You are not voting for Penuel. Okay. Even if Penuel is the president of that country, of that uh, party. party. Right? And, and the parties, where do we find them? How do we know about them? Well, of course, I mean, you're ordinarily supposed to find them within your communities, but most of the time you find political parties much more visible in communities, maybe, maybe mainly probably due to budgets and all of that. I don't know. But you find them mostly during elections, right? When the campaigning period starts. So or, currently when you're going to vote, you have to, you have to look around campaign time. You won't know all of them until it's close you to election can go, time. You can go to the website of the IEC. The all the political electron. parties are there. There's well, it's hidden somewhere in their website, but you have to yeah. go there and Google and look for list of political parties. IEC in the IEC, and independent under that commission. under that menu, they explain what all the parties Each stand for. Each political party in terms, I haven't seen the portal where they actually have the information on the political parties, but because they register political parties, yeah. I'm assuming they should have somewhere on their website a list of all the political parties, and you should be able to click on a political party and basically read maybe their constitution okay. as a basic document. Or maybe read something about their um, maybe some policy framework, which mm. is their you know I, the, the the constitution probably will give you a little bit of context in terms of what they stand for in a simplistic way. But there's no other way. Of course, you could also find political parties when they're campaigning door to door, or they have programs and campaigns that they would want you to be involved in, like you know protests, mm. and they perhaps come to your home to ask for your support. I suppose that's how. That's probably the the, the most common way of meeting political parties. So if if the IEC website doesn't have this list, or if the list don't have constitutions and explanations, that means already there's a problem in terms of my options of who to vote for. I'd have to wait for them to campaign. You'd have to wait for them to campaign, or if they have a website, I mean, it's up yeah. to them if they have a But I wouldn't know, I'm 18. I only have. know three parties. If I want to know eight, the rest. I mean, young people now are online by yeah. and large. So it really isn't that much of a train smash to actually expect them to understand that yeah. they can go to Google and say, uh, ABC party, I'm looking for this and that about them, their constitution, I'm looking for, you know, um, their latest programs, mm. I'm looking for what they have done in a municipality or, 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 or a province or national government, where they are actually represented, whether they have one person or two, you know, those kinds of things, almost like how you, you when you're looking for food and you want to order online. I, I like thing. the menu example because it, it helps me with my questions as a 10 year old. Yeah. Um, do you have any idea Obviously, you say you haven't been to the portal and you haven't visited websites of political parties. Yeah. Do you have any idea if the political parties themselves or the IEC tries to get them to tell their story in different languages? No, the IEC does not do what it's supposed to do. We spoke about this before. The IEC has a mandate which is in their act, yeah. right? It's section, I forget the section in the act, but it's not in the Electoral Act, but in the Electoral Commission Act. Right, the act that governs them is the IEC, like I was explaining with UNICEF Department of Education. They have two acts, but the main one is the one that comes from the IEC. There's a clause that says that they must do what they call voter education, or I can't remember, they could use an, a different phrase, but they don't do it. If you, if you can go to the annual report of the IEC and look for voter education, how much was spent in mm. that year or when, you know, for, for that program, yeah, yeah, voter education, because they're supposed to budget for it because of the Act says so. Yes. They, the, so they don't do any. I, I would like to be nicer to the IEC about the IEC, but unfortunately I can't because this is the reality, right? So for the same reason that when you go to their website, it's very difficult to find information about the political parties that they have registered, even links 
for all the political parties to their websites, should they have them or basic contact information or whatever, they don't have them. They just go on and on about, like it's a very archaic, outdated, uncreative, dull space, that electoral um, IEC space. Does this mean I need to understand maybe English and Afrikaans to have an understanding of what I'm voting for? Otherwise, I'm almost excluded if I'm not fluent in those two languages. One, the language is just way above and the average person's understanding. Yeah. Two, the language speaks to political party members, not even members, leaders, who, who would be involved with, you know, the operation now management of the party and, and all yes. of that. So it speaks to people who are experienced and probably working in the political space operationally. It does not speak to citizens, which is a big problem with the IEC, mm. which is why South Africans don't understand the impact of voting for, let's say, let's take a middle-class person who's who's relatively well-educated and very independent and able to do their own research and understand context and even can get things translated for themselves. Mm. I, I raised this issue before. One of the one of the, the mandates that government, because we're a country that is multicultural and multiracial and multilingual, we were supposed to have in in pro, in protection of African languages, in protection of this indigenous knowledge thing that we keep talking about, saying we, we uphold it, but we don't. That the public universities, all of them, especially the ones that offer social sciences, uh, I mean, TVET colleges can probably be forgiven. The one, all the universities that offer social sciences have a permanent translation department that is open to the public for various reasons Mm. not just to understand laws but also when you go to court Mm. in court they are bound to give you a translator but by the time you get to court either as a witness or a complainant or whatever it's late the game is done you now you you should have been prepared for your case etc in the process of preparing for the court case you need laws to be translated South Africans don't understand their own laws. They don't even know how the laws come about. They don't even know where the laws come from. By and large, don't even care anymore because we have also become accustomed to being um, slaves. We want to be told what to do, Mm. when to do it, with who to do it, what time to do it, how to do it, where to, you know, we, 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 even now, you, you, this is your famous line that, there are no jobs. There aren't. In mm-hmm. fact, it, it, that's actually a compliment to the economy. The jobs are actually declining. Mm. Not only are there no jobs, but we are in a negative growth uh, rate with jobs. And so, yeah. Thank you. So go to the IEC, see if you can find the political parties. we assuming there won't be other languages. Hopefully someone can help you. So now that I've seen the parties, or maybe they've campaigned to me, I go to... Um, the voting stations and I vote. After I vote for my favorite party on the menu because they look cool or I like their leader. And they say the right things and they also and they say the right they things. reach out to your emotional childhood traumas about colonization and apartheid. Yeah. Yeah. After I've voted for a political party and we see the results, ANC has won, they want to run government. What does that mean to me? And Nothing. I think before you answer that, you spoke about the constitution. I've heard this word manifesto. What is that? Is that the constitution of a Maybe party? Come, I don't know where manifesto comes from. Probably manifest. And manifest basically means, you know, if I say I'm going to do this and I actually do it, I'm manifesting it, it's actually mm-hmm. happening. So that's probably where manifesto comes from. But a manifesto is basically a list of things that political parties beyond the ideology and the policy. Right, Mm -hmm. that they say they are going to do. So a manifesto should exactly be like a menu. It must be very, very simple. I must have. It's not required by the IEC. It's it's just something. What the IEC requires just a a constitution only. Well, they also require. So I can't ask a party, "What's your Where's your manifesto?" They're like, "No, we don't need to do that." No, no, no. They the parties. Well, I suppose it 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 sort of got born out of comparativeness, Mm -hmm. right? Uh, but also it's it's not a requirement, but it is a requirement, you know, um, for you to, you know, convince somebody politically because you're not selling Amaquina, you're Mm. not selling something tangible, nor are you even selling a service, you're selling an idea and you're selling a commitment, you're selling a promise. So the person wants to know, what are you going to do for me? If Ngyag Votela, Yes. Right. What are you what, what, what do you stand for? That's the ideology and the policy part. And then what are you going to do stemming from your ideology and your 
and your policies. But often we know that it means nothing because citizens do not hold the political parties to account. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult to hold a political party to account in South Africa because of the doi doi culture. Mm -hmm. How are you going to hold a guy to account who then decides to go and pay people, come and protest outside his office in mm -hmm. defense of the people that he probably knows good? Okay, on this day, there are people who are coming here to give me a memorandum or to at least, you know, share some unhappiness that they have with some representatives of mine in the area where they stay and they need me to do something about it but i don't really want them to come here so i'm just going to arrange arrange a, a, a thing a, 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 a protest i'm, and I'm then trying to remain a, a, i'm trying to know? remain a 10 year old but i i need to jump out of the 10 year old quickly yes you're saying they are political leaders yeah who pay fake protesters yes to come and protest outside of their offices yes so as to divert attention yes from real people that are aggrieved Yes. that are coming to complain, hold them accountable. This is something that's happening. We we saw this. You we you saw it. I saw it. Ten year old saw it. Everybody saw it. We saw this uh, during a time I think at Lutuli House, um, where there was a woman who literally got beaten up. Like it was all over social media. The video clip. Everybody knows about it. Mm. And I'm sharing one thing. You saw video clips. Probably maybe you didn't see them. Sometime maybe a year, two or three ago, um, there was a protest at Lutiri House again. And I'm making an example with them because they are the most common with this thing. And the at the at the protest. I mean, there was no protest, but there were people, you know, uh, gathering to be waiting for Cyril Ramaphosa because this was, I suppose, a, a day when he goes into the political office and there was a, a scuffling and some fights and all of that. So this is something that's very, very, very common. I mean, we see it even in business, you know, uh, what they call these business forums mm. that they've established are really just uh, a bunch of, uh, of gangsters uh, who are obviously business people but they're gangsters or mm. what, what else can you call them? I don't know what else to call them who basically mobilize people and, uh, you know, people looking for work. And in most cases nowadays, they use foreign nationals mm. um, to go on site once the, the work has been allocated and the, and the, and the, and the actual, um, um, what, what do you call it? The actual infrastructure teams are already there, uh, equipment, etc., on site to start the work. And then they, what they call shutting down the site and they shut down the site because they want business. And so that's what happens essentially also um, in the political space, the, the, the patriarchal character of politics in South Africa marred or, 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 or darkened by our own past, which we can't, you know, that we, we couldn't jump through a vacuum and, and be 50 years after 94. It would have been great if we could do that. But it, we were always going to go through this crisis because our history, our mm. colonial, our history of even resisting colonialism and colonial apartheid has always been a violent affair, but not just violent in terms of physical violence and not violence only coming from the colonizers, mm. also violence coming from us amongst each other, right? Mm. Towards each other. If you think about it, the most simplistic example is the slave trade. The slave trade in Africa, and we must really stop telling a romantic narrative. The slave trade in Africa was driven by African men by and large, the people who who fought against slave trade, the slave, you know, forcing mostly men at the time. Of course, there were women as well, but majority was men. Forcing men to be slaves were women. It was always women that force, fought against that. But black men, because black men have got this weakness. You are weak. You are weak. You are very weak. You are, you are, but you, you can be paid. <laughs> No, no, no. But you are weak. And this is, you see, that's a classical example of a response of a black man. When you, <laughs> when you criticize them, the toxicity comes out. Oh, you're Oh, you are anti-men. Me, I've been accused of being anti-men. Me, I've been a boyfriend in my life. Yes, men. Yeah, I do. I love men. I really, really love men. That's why I'm a, I'm a daddy's girl. I love men. And because I love men, um, I always want to be honest with them because 
um, you don't like honesty. It, it it triggers your ego. It triggers your something. Maybe it's karmic now because white people have been colonizing over like 500 years in Africa. So you've been inheriting generational karma of low self-esteem and cheap egos. You've got egos. Your egos are too big. Your egos are out of control. You know, a friend of mine was telling me the other day her son was beating up her daughter because her, he was beating up his girlfriend and his sister came to stop him from beating up the girlfriend. And then he started beating up the sister and then he started picking, he was beating up everybody. And in the house, it was him, his girlfriend, my, my, my friend's daughter and his daughter with the girlfriend. It was him, his baby mama, his sister and his kid, all of them girls. He had no qualms. He was beating everything up. He just couldn't be bothered because uh, he's got some problems at work. <laughs> you know, so I'm saying that with black men, um, you know, with the with the with this this culture of violence and always wanting to protest and resist using violence, physical violence, economic violence, sexual violence, emotional violence, um, psycho like all forms of violence, right? That men, black men, right? I don't want to talk about white men. I, in my, I'm not interested in what white men do because white men are doing their thing, whether right or wrong. They they're managing it. Nabafas ba. Babo, Abafaz Babo are not fighting. I think the only white woman I know who tries to fight is Helen Zilla. But nah, you're toxic because she's inherently racist. I mean, Helen Zilla came to South Africa when she was four years old. She was not even born here. Uh, even her parents were not born here. So her, she's not even a South African as far as I understand. She she would not be what I would call a, a settler citizen. She's not a citizen. Settler citizens for me are the ones who can date back their presence in South Africa to the 1600s, right? or at least 1700s, 1900s, even early 1900s, not Helen Zilla. But what white people are doing in their own little spaces is great for them because it works for them. We need to work out what's going to work for us. But we are not going to get to that point with you people, you men, you, Wena Penuel. Me and my gender. Yeah, 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 you. And you need to accept it because we have never been anything in this country but victims. We remain victims, even worse under the apartheid. I mean, under the, 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 the apartheid, it is an apartheid government, by the way, because it's economic apartheid. Under the ANC, which is an imperialist agent organization, it's an organization of imperialism. They are agents of imperialism in the highest and worst form possible. Or Tambo in the 1970s, and I used to have this video clip, but the internet removed it because, of course, the oligarchs are the ones who own the internet, right, and control it. There was a video clip that I had, and I shared it on my Facebook page, maybe about 15 years ago when I, you know, when we first started getting onto Facebook, of O.R. Tambo giving allegiance and pledge and pledging his allegiance rather of the ANC in the 70s in the United Nations, right, in The Hague, saying that we fully support the new world order, fully, fully support the new world order as the African National Congress. And and he carried on and on and on in that clip. You can go and Google it now. Say, oh, our time, United Nations giving ANC allegiance to the New World Order in the United Nations. You won't find it. Maybe I need to get a hacker. I have not been able to find it. I once shared that video. And after sharing that video at the time, I think I was just an ordinary rank and file member of the ANC because I was in corporate. I was doing my own thing. I had some idiot, some stupid woman from the ANC. I can't remember her name. One of the types, Abu Batabili. Ah, Ibu. Right? Why is Abu Batabili catching strays? Um, some stupid woman like her, Ooh. and I'm saying like her because she was an NEC member. Okay, fine. Let me take that back. Not like Batabile. Some stupid woman from the NEC of the ANC at the time inboxed me and said to me, you can't say that. You can't share that video. You can't. Obviously, what went down after that was very ugly. But yeah, I, 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 I had to make her understand that it's my data. It's my laptop because phones at the time we couldn't be on social media with. It's my data. It's my laptop. It's my house. It's my electricity. I pay for it through income I get through a job I do in the private sector that has nothing to do with her. And I'm not going to be told by her or whoever what I put on my social media and what I don't. But the bottom line is the point I was coming to is that you were asking about how we, you know, how we're going to, you know, what's the best way politically, economically and all of that to take things forward. It's, it's a valid question. But the problem is that we are sitting with problems, with issues that are holding us back that we can't overcome because we are scared 
you know, Sianzaba. We are always afraid of men as black women. We are either afraid you're going to rape us, you're going to beat us up, you're going to tell us to shut up, you're going to tell us not to wear makeup, going to tell us not to wear short skirts. I mean, I don't get it why black men have this obsession with not wanting to see women's uh, bodies. Why? You can't control your sex drive. Are you all inherently some sort of pedophiles or rapists inside? So you're worried that if the woman is naked, you won't be able to control yourself if you see her or if she's wearing a short skirt. And what the hell? We wore skins here in Africa. I'm, I'm a skins. In the summer, the skins would be, barely just be covering what it needs to cover. Our breasts were not even covered. But you, today... More than white men are the ones who can't control your sexual urges, which is a very big problem. A, a person, a human being, not just a man, not being able to control their sexual urges. It, it results in a lot of abuse and violence and trauma, especially for the rapists themselves. So we first need to fix you guys before we can fix anything else. Tina, we are ready for a new South Africa as as, as women because we are we always work hard and, and we are always meritocratic. We always have to meet criteria because we don't have the privilege of your power that rests in your in your in your even in your complexion and your hair because you feel like you are black you are black and therefore you suffered you are the only people who suffered and then the only way for you to get over your suffering is to is to go and steal and rob and rape and beat up and 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 and, and. you can't exist in equality that's why black men get angry when we talk about equality it's black men who get angry more than white men you know you know why because the black you, man shouting. Yes, you don't want <laughs> you don't want to be equal, you guys. You guys don't want equality. Every time we we demand and we talk about equality in any space, you know what's your first response? Equality from from who? For what? You know, you you ask all sorts of stupid, ridiculous questions, and we are saying no. Listen carefully. We are asking for equality. Why would you fight that? We're not asking to be superior. We're not asking to be above you. We're not asking you to go and tell the vendor people to go and tell that toxic guy who looted VPS to get off the, the seat of the, the young girl who's supposed to be the head of the monarchy, a vendor. You're not, you know, <laughs> we're not, uh, 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 you know, uh, asking you even to do that, which you should be doing. But the bottom line is we are not going to move forward as Africans in South Africa, as us, the native citizens, even if the Electoral Act is changed, until we deal with this question of the gender relations and where the problems with our gender relations come from and originally where they emanate from. And, you know, until we do away with the violent, uh, how can I put it, the, the violent mentality that men, especially black men, have. Because we are where we are today with a country that has collapsed, 60% unemployment, violent crime, um, you know, government entities that are not working because of black men who are corrupt to the core, who have low self-esteem, who have an ego problem, who have a problem with their penises, who have a problem with... Um, you know, equality, who don't want to be equal, who want to stay above other people, but without any merit, without any merit, all the power you have given yourselves that we have given you through through, through, through the electoral system over the last 30 years, what have you done with it? What, what, what have you, what have we as South Africans, do we have to be proud of that our government has done in the last 30 years, like the National Party government, by the end of 30 years, after the National Party was in charge, Toxic as those men were, but they had already led to innovations, technologically, medically, scientifically, right? Global innovations. What have you as black men, seeing as Niawata and Dama positions, and you even give yourselves positions, and even the women that you put into positions of power, especially politically, even in the private sector, you put them there because they are patriarchal princesses. You do not want women like me. You want women who will, Yebo Baba, the whole day because you have an ego problem. So I'm, I'm guessing the 10 year old can't come back. The 10 year old uh, is I, here. I asked him to step out of the room and the deviation was actually the protesting. The 10 year old Pol has never po left. Political, political leaders that hire fake protesters and then. Yes. I think you just. I gave you many you examples. You just, about remembered, that. you just remember that black man upset you. Yeah. Um, I'm going to request that we ask the 10 year old to come back another day.
Yeah. So that we can carry on with the discussion of what happens after you vote and after a party has won the elections. Okay. We'll cover wards, proportional representation. And then after that, I'm hoping we'll speak about electoral reform, which now answers the other thing the 10-year-old wanted to know. We've of. spoken about wards before, though. But anyway, it, it's It fine. doesn't matter. There are people that are going to be watching me and you for the first time. For the first time. So we have to keep repeating ourselves. That's what education is, I believe. Yeah. The repetition. It's so, true. Yeah. And what it should be. Um, so the 10-year-old is not coming back. Um, I'm happy to engage you on the passionate topic that you'd raised. When I'm not sweating. Like. When I'm not sweating. No, no, no. We, I'm so unhappy about this because I've, I've this is a biological condition. Like I'm having hot flushes because... Because I'm so hot. Be, no. And your body can't help itself when it's around No, you. no. Because, I understand. Because my estrogen... Don't worry. A lot of my these young girls feel levels, the same when they see me. Because my estrogen levels, you see, this is the thing that I'm talking about. <laughs> if black men stop thinking about their penises just for at least a 20, one 24-hour day and start thinking about science and innovation and other things that could make society better and stop thinking about how hot they are, you know, because your hotness really isn't helping us with anything. But I was saying to you, my estrogen levels, yes which estrogen is a hormone that women have in abundance. Yes. Nina, yeah, well, we have many hormones, all of us, right, as human yes. beings. But the one that distinguishes me from you as a man is estrogen. And the one that distinguishes you from me as a female is what? Testosterone, right? Testosterone. So, which is probably the root cause of your problems. So what's happening and right the root now? the cause of your hot flushes. Yeah, exactly. This is testosterone exactly. right here. So right now, what's happening, my estrogen for the last, let's say, maybe three Cannot years. Cannot control itself around my is testosterone. Is, 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 is decreasing. <laughs> <laughs> it's dropping, right? My estrogen levels are dropping. And then my testosterone levels, because we also have testosterone, right? Mm. Are starting to increase. And with you, when you get to my age, your estrogen levels will be increasing. Oh, shame, never. And your testosterone levels. My testosterone levels, will go up, sister. No, no, no. When you get older, we become the men. Luther. When, when, Sorry, I was just saying, I was just, I was just older, isolating. We the men, yeah. So I was just isolating that I think we'll carry on with them. Um, Electoral political conversation another time, because I think you became impassioned in. And I digressed. Yes, in in what you feel is a fundamental conversation around where we need to be, in particular as black people. I. But the the development problems are with us. I hear you. The underdevelopment I hear is, you. is is our problem. But for some reason, we think that someone is going to come and solve it for us by giving us a bag of money. Even if somebody gives a black man, right, South Africa, a billion rand, umni genje cash. So, what's going to happen? Are you going to see a new town developing somewhere? Are you going to see a new industry developing somewhere? Uzombona kijima up and down ngama Ferrari and young girls being pedophilic. That's why I'm that's why I'm a woman. No, to make it no, rain. no, 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 no. They need to see that I've arrived. See that you have arrived. Of course. And then what? And there's a problem with they us. Make it rain so on if, the honeys. So if, if Penuel has the arrived. Insta, the Instagram girls are waiting. And then what happens? Axel we have a good time. Axel, Axel, is it not prostitution? Sorry, man, it's a Um so you know, normally what I do when, when people raise such issues, I yeah. think first and foremost, I need to say, I hope your friend and I don't know if it's her son. Her son and daughter. I, I really hope that situation has been resolved. Yeah. It doesn't sound like a good thing. And I hope it gets resolved in some way. Yeah. It's it has to violence, be resolved. Domestic violence is probably the worst thing yeah. that you could see, especially for a young girl child. Yeah. So I hope that gets resolved. And also if it doesn't get resolved from the home, uh, and everybody, died, you know, is scared of this toxic utoki law, because that's what I call men nowadays, utoki in South Africa. They're very toxic in their homes. If it's not stopped in the home, he's going to kill someone's child out there. So hopefully that gets resolved. Yeah. So I wanted to say, um, in your speech, you did sound a lot like you were defending white people and white men, which yeah. would upset a lot of people. Because even when you speak about the apartheid government and all the things they built, mm. for a lot of people, they built them off the back of black pain, black yes. sweat, black yes. exploitation, black love, yes. uh, black blood, sorry. Yeah. I agree with you that we, a lot of us, all of us need to look in the mirror. Yeah. 
You know, we speak about holding people accountable and a lot of us don't hold ourselves to account. Yeah. And I personally do not like the gender fights. Yeah. I don't like the patriarchal and the men, you guys are, yeah. I think it causes more destruction. Yeah. But if we are going to stay with that, which I'm happy to entertain, when I hear women speak about how men have failed, black men are the cause of our struggles. Yeah. There's a big part of me that actually agrees. And I've said it on platforms that I, I think black men by and large have really let everyone down. You know, and, and yes, themselves. because they failed by Abba Saba Bilungu, Amabun, so they end up Bashaya, their women, fans, yeah. other foreigners, other black foreigners, etc. Yeah. From a female perspective, after blaming the black men, again, yeah. women need to look in the mirror. And this is where yeah. I ask if you feel black men are such a problem, yeah. why are black women not buying from black female owned businesses? Yeah. Why are they not working for black female owned businesses? Why are they not? voting for black female leaders yeah why are they themselves not creating these spaces not necessarily anti-men spaces but yeah. saying women need jobs Equality so spaces. i will hire women yeah women need business funding i will buy from female owned businesses yes um women must be leaders i mean one of the questions i wanted to ask you and maybe this is your chance to come in someone like elinda Sisulu. yeah is she not good enough as a potential candidate to lead this country forward you said you'd be happy to be president of this country. She's someone that I think even has a platform to potentially do that. Kosa Zanetla Minizuma lost out. She's getting a bit older now. Lindy has still got the energy. Would you maybe... No, I would never vote for either Nkosa Zana or even Lindy Sisulu because this is the problem with change, right? We need to change our society. We're not going to change our society with old uh, habits and outdated behaviors. Mm -hmm and things that have just not worked. Secondly, anybody who's produced by, you know, a, a toxic system, which is like the, the party list proportional representation system that we're talking about, who's produced from that system is programmed, is conditioned to believe that there's there's no other format that will work, right? And, and even the way they do things, right, uh, I remember once listening to Lindy. I'll tell you what. Let me. It's in Kalengalua. Umfaz Gazuma. Umfaz Gazuma. One. My own biased opinion is that. Can she not be her own person without being Umfaz well, Gazuma? I mean, her whole behavior politically, you know, is always around posturing for Zuma and doing all these crazy things. But it things. sounds like you're taking away her power. No, I'm she not. She's her own person. No, I'm not. I have. When I was training in radiography in '95. Uh, at Joburg Jen and uh, Vitz Technicon, she was the Minister of Health. She brought about, you see the destruction that you see of all the hospitals in Gauteng, it's, it's Nkosa Zana's problem. It's, it's actually, she caused it. I never could understand why Tabombegi allowed her. But then of course, if you- Tabombegi had to allow her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, because, because he was president, yes. not because he was a man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But not because I, he was a man. No. Because he was president. No man. I mean, I mean, I went no, out. Since we were speaking when, about the genders, yes, I just wanted no, to highlight. No, not because, not because she's a woman, but because okay. he was president or he was deputy president. But either way, he was responsible for government business as, as deputy president and Mandela was president. Yeah. But then, of course, with the deployment uh, uh, um, uh, and, and CADA deployment uh, uh, policy of, 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 of South Africa and also how the political parties operate. You must remember the political parties are governed by the Electoral Act. Their existence mm. is governed by, like how a company is governed by CIPC Correct. And, and related, other related laws. Yeah. So um, the, the, the the I could never understand how it happened until I started growing up and realizing and reading a lot and engaging eco eco economic conversation a lot more, even content. Um, I, I'm more interested in economic content than political content because the political content is easy to understand once you understand the economic um, uh context but until i started to understand that the anc is a permanently imperialist uh, organization that basically is working for um like i said it's you know the new world order mm. and uh, global capitalists and all of that so i understood why he then allowed her because it was actually something that probably came through a briefcase through the presidency when she privatized the t teaching and training institutions that were producing nurses 
There was nothing more ridiculous than that. That's Nkosazana. There's many other things about her sure. that irritated me. Uh, at the time, as a medical student, as a, as a medical uh, studies student, right? Because I was almost not directly affected because she started off with the nursing colleges and she privatized them. And you know why they privatized them? Corruption, because they wanted to give, because all these private institutions that then took over from the government ones, the government nursing colleges, right? Mm -hmm. You'll find KDAS there. You'll find ANC people who knew nothing about healthcare, mm -hmm. still know nothing about healthcare because they don't really like to learn. I'm going to government just for the tenders. You, you guys, like, you guys like to stress yourselves about this thing. And I really think it's time that I, I, I ask people to stop stressing themselves. This thing is not complex. Labantu, mabangena, go government, literally, all they are doing is what I told you. Who's getting which tender? Whose son and daughter is going to get which job? Who's going to be the CFO? Who's going to be the DG? Who's going to be the DDG? All the critical governance positions that will allow them to loot and steal, mm. um, you know, and, and who's going to be in the legislature? Who's going to be the speaker? Who's going to be the chairperson of all the committees? And which uh, person chairs which committee and then see I exchange so that law also allows certain nonsense to happen and that is why it's so important for committees to have actually independent people as MPLs and MPs but nonetheless the reason I would not support Usisulu uh, is because um firstly I don't respect her, uh, her 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 policy positions because I don't know them she's never spoken about policy I don't hear her discussing any policy I hear her complaining every day about MK this MK that like we don't really care we all now know that this whole MK thing was a scam anyway because when they went to Zambia and Tanzania and wherever we don't know what they were doing there like we really really don't know what they were doing there we don't know what planning and economic uh, you know strategies when they came back we just believed in our minds because it was logical to believe that we thought that oh they are so smart because they they've been in exile plan. yeah they spent 30 years in exile they were plan you know we then we didn't realize that we actually thought that that's what they were doing because we are smarter than them it so we thought well if i'm going to go to exile surely i'm going to be planning Surely I'm going to be strategizing. Surely I'm going to, but they were not, they were clearly not doing that. But what I despise about her oh. is that she was minister of uh, human settlements, yes. which was housing in 94. Mm. And she, okay, let, let me explain this. There were, there were residents of South Africa in the townships. Mm. Um, you know, in the township areas that had areas middle class that started when when the when the black township started developing middle class areas where you could actually get a bond. You because you you you'd understand because of separate development and apartheid, black people could not get mortgage bonds mm. at a certain point, and also because the 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 land the land in this in the rural areas in the in the Bantustan areas is 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 permission to occupy land. You can't buy it, right? Yeah. You don't get a private title deed. So in the South Africa parts of the uh, the, um, of South Af of the towns and cities of South Africa, the, the apartheid government then, because they were developing the, the, the race groups separately, that's what separate development was about. Mm. Um, they would develop, they had a different economic strategy for black people and a different one for white people and colored people and Indians. So they then decided, no, let's go and open up the mortgage market and start developing. Actually, they, they took a decision when the, when the apartheid government took over, they had a, an economic plan to, um, to, 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 uh, to establish a black middle class, mm. which wasn't there before. It was just workers, etc. cetera. Yeah, there were teachers, a couple of nurses, but that was really at a small scale. Um, they then um, decided, no, we want to expand the black middle class mm. because they are using this capitalist model that they're using for themselves as white people, right? And so they wanted the same capitalist model to apply in black townships. And so many, uh, and then obviously they started putting more uh, budgets uh, into, into uh, uh, nursing training development, teachers for Bantu education, um, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, I'm looking mm -hmm. at the government side, right? And then the private sector, the mining sector was, was, was burgeoning and was also starting to produce foremen like beyond the labor mm. they were starting to now develop a higher level of supervisory level you know like my my dad 
mm. uh, was a beneficiary of that era, right? Um, so across the mining sector and then the beneficiation because the apartheid government did beneficiation. That's why we had so many jobs. ISCO was a beneficiation of our iron ore. Mm. We would mine it and then ISCO would process it and we were, by the way, processing mm. the best steel in the world, strongest steel in the world. Sassol as well. Sassol and many, many, I mean, there are many actually mm. in the medical research space, medical science space, there are many, many companies. Sure. Um, there were there were agricultural colleges. They were in the training space that were government owned and agricultural science institutions that were doing agricultural research, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. Uh, biochemical warfare, I mean, medical research, like everything that was established under the, uh, probably by the British before, uh, but then the apartheid government took it another step, right? Sure. So this woman, <laughs> This will, uh, this lady, this is Sulu lady. Yeah, she, the reason I really despise her work in that department is that during the, the this period when they were allegedly in exile, right? Doing whatever they were doing there. Right? Pla- plan- we, planning for a new South Africa. Wow. If, if, if this is what you get after planning, if this is the result of a plan, of a 30 year plan in exile, then you know what black people need to just not plan, Aye, right? So they were in the seventies, let's say the eighties, let me say the eighties, cause I don't know how far back to go in the seventies, but let's say the eighties, many black people then started getting AMAP bonds. They would buy, you know, mortgage houses, a uh, deep roof extension where I come from. We used to call it Tycoon Village, eh, Akaville. Ah, the DK. Yeah, it was Wubi? called Tycoon Village, eh, Akaville. Akaville. Akaville with bank. Uh, in Nelspreet also had, I'm, I'm talking about the areas where I grew up, even uh, where I was born and grew up, even King Williamstown also started developing. So the apartheid government was very deliberate. I always say that. They were very, very deliberate. They planned. They planned, and you would see their plans actually come to life. However mediocre those with, plans. Without going into exile. Yeah, in with, however mediocre the, the results of those those plans are and 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 Amilcar Cabral says it if you do not see the strength in your enemy or the strengths that your enemy have you're a fool and you should get out of whatever fight you are having with that person because you're definitely going to lose mm-hmm. so this is why I like to study the, the 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 you know the white population white societies and their economic uh, strategies and their plans because obviously they they have a way of coordinating this thing such that it gives them the result that they you know planned right it so serves their agenda it doesn't matter I, you no, know no, no, I mean, I'm I, mean just I don't care whose agenda it serves. No, I just want to say, because you said this Listen, earlier. Listen, the apartheid government, compared to what the ANC is doing now, compared to what you have today, what your your daily lived experience under the ANC, the apartheid government actually served b- b- black people better. I wanted to say, you said this earlier, that uh, with Abelung, their agenda served their people. Yeah, primarily. The problem, the problem that you have with the incumbent government is the fact that they are not serving There's no their agenda people. to serve black people by yeah. the ANC they should serve themselves because my question was going to be if Abelung are doing so well why not join them and the reason you can't join them is because they don't serve no the reason you can't you join them is, people. is because you are emotional and you are also misleading yourself but l- l- we'll have sorry, that conversation sorry. another day mom Lindy I, we, no mama lo guna bantu emalokshini in the South African demarcated parts of the country, not mm. Amapantu stands. Amapantu stands. I never grew up there. I never lived there. Nishap, and I'm glad I didn't. Uh, and I'm not apologetic about it. I'm not going to apologize for where I was born. I didn't ask to be born there. Mm. Um, and I do feel sorry for the people who are there and are stuck in underdevelopment. I think it's a real, real tragedy. But they keep voting for the ANC. And so I actually eh, don't empathize that much because it's obviously what they want. You know, you wouldn't vote for something that you can see. Anybody, but Barakeng, who said it? Einstein, you keep doing the same thing over and over and over again, getting the same result. Hi! That I am, you know. Definition of insanity. Eh, hey, hey, figures is a By the way, I'm unmarried out of choice. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. At I least can get married tomorrow, tomorrow if I wanted to, but I was not. I was not trying to have a Mike Tyson in my life. So, um, what this lady did, ne? Gunabo mama, especially nurses, teachers, police officers, etc., like public workers, right? Yeah. Who are already working for the for the government, right? During apartheid. Like the teachers who taught us about primary, Mayfen primary in all the schools that we went to in the townships, right? Who bought their houses through the banks? The, back then they used to be called, you know, like VBS, like mm. they were mutual banks. Mutual bank, yeah. And they were specifically just for there was an NPS, there was a 
Uh, I get rid the, the economy was everything was separate. So there yeah. were these banks that were targeting mortgages only for black people, yeah. right? And there were, I mean, the, by and large, I suppose the, even, even the interest may, may have been higher. They bought those houses in Gamma mortgages, right? They decided to join the, apart, the anti-apartheid struggle. Like many people joined the anti-apartheid struggle, you know, informally. With all of us were basically involved as long as you were black and you know more, let me say majority of us mm. were, were involved in one way or the other in fighting the apartheid not the ANC not the political parties mm. and they decided to to have an economic boycott hear me we don't have economic boycotts now anymore economic boycotts Abu Mama Benu had economic boycotts and they decided they want to stick it into the apartheid government which for me was the most intelligent uh, 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 struggle strategy ever. They they boycotted paying their mortgages, all of them together, when black people were still united and we still did things together mm-hmm. and we didn't sell each other out. And they, and, and mass, thousands and thousands of people uh, uh, boycotted, especially in the Transvaal, their mortgage bonds. Mm-hmm. And then you know what the ANC told them? No, as soon as they come in, as soon as by, 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 they, they become government, they are going to sort it out so that Banga Tatelwa is in Ruzabo, nan, 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 nan. It was difficult in the 80s even for the banks to send Abu Baba Bizan, Amate collectors mm. or whatever to evict because the townships were volatile, mm. uh, at all. Like, and white people, few white people would come in, those who were either involved in underground struggles or the ones who were uh, working with the Askaris or who were spies, etc. etc. Mm. But very few white people would come into the townships. And then 94 comes. Mandela becomes president. Lindy Wesisulu becomes the home affair. I mean, the 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 the, the, the human settlements. I In ninety four. No, no, no. It was not her. It was. She came much later. No, I, I must take that back. She, she no, she came later after that, like the first. Because I know time. before her, I think we talked. It was it was Joe. It was Joe. What's his name? Modisa. Joe Slovo. Was, was there Joe Slovo? I have was no there idea. a guy called Joe Slovo? Yes, there was a Joe Slovo. Yeah, yeah, it was Joe Slovo. He designed the RTP, the Reconstruction and Development Plan, which had nothing to do with housing, by the way. It was an economic plan because he was a communist. So he designed an economic plan and he called it the Reconstruction and Development Program. Mm. And then, of course, that's the one that then started the fights because then Beggy brought his gear. Mm. Right? And as <laughs> We can we can go on and on about that, but we are here now. So she was not minister of home affairs. I mean, uh, human settlements. The first one, it was Joe Slova. Yes, then she became minister, right? Okay, maybe she was the third one. I don't know, but she was there in the early days. I know. To- I'm, a, I'm explaining was why I don't. Lindy was I'm now. explaining why she irritates me. I, I need you are asking me about why I would sub, would I support females? Speaking about supporting other females because black men, according to you, yeah. But I mean, I, if would do you support other males who are criminals and are pedophiles? I'm not going to support a female because she has breasts and a vagina. I'm going to support her because she's smart, she works hard, she's honest, she's committed, she mm. she she's she's she can do it. I'm not, because the problem with the colonial society, neo colonial society, is that we've got a lot of patriarchal princessing because of fear and violence women are in political parties especially even in companies black women are were probably even worse than the white women in, the, in this regard we don't want to challenge men because men have fragile egos so our job is to sin pota pota the whole time and then of course you know then there's those who, who who can't challenge men because the men make sure that when they make appointments and there's an affirmative action vacancy for a, a female who has to be black according to the numbers, who doesn't actually have the skills and the knowledge. And that's my problem. But anyway, and I'm not saying this about Lindy. What I'm saying is she then came in. I guess now she's making a noise about coloni- decolonization and what, what, what. She came into a portfolio where her party promised black people, workers, who sacrificed their life their life, their livelihood. Many of those people lost their houses. The banks came and literally kicked them out, repossessed the houses. Thousands of those houses are littered across the townships here in Gauteng, and across the whole of what used to be the Transvaal. Not only did the ANC not step in, they have run so far away from that promise. Like Aguna Nomunto Yeto ANC, including Lindiwe Sisulu. 
especially her. I could have forgiven Joe Slover because he was a white man. I don't care if he says he was a communist. I really don't care about the ideological side of it. I, I don't even trust those white communists from, from the ANC anyway. You know, I might like them, but I don't really trust them. But I expected her, I would have expected better from her. But you know what she did? She walked into a role and said, yeah, why should I fix it when the men couldn't fix it? That's patriarchal princessing. So if you're a real woman and you really care about this country and you really care about the children of this country and the fact that they've got nothing to inherit except debt, because right now we are being ridden to the hills with IMF debt, mm. right? You are not going to do your uncle and nonsense le aikulumayo. You will start by saying, okay, she's now in environmental affairs or something, but she had gone back to housing at some point. I was hoping that she would have a conscience. By the way, the, 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 those houses, right, were, were repossessed. The ANC didn't do anything about it. Those people were blacklisted. A lot of them, their lives got completely destroyed because they were blacklisted in the credit bureaus. Um, many of them got depressed. Many of them did. They were sent from pillar to post. Eventually, I think Investec or one of the big banks bought those, uh, what do you call it? The credit, the books mm. from those the, debts. The debt book. Right? Mm. Yes. Um, Mandela uh, was, was, was the one, I don't know whether he made the commitment personally, but because he was the president of the ANC at the time and the first president of the country um, in, in a democratic state, I, 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 I can say this. He was supposed to make sure that he gets economic justice for the people who made economic sacrifices, sacrificed Zindlu Zaban and themselves and rendered themselves homeless for the ANC. Did nothing. Tabom Begit did nothing. Khalima Mutlante did nothing. Jacob Zuma, oh, the worst. Cyril Ramaphosa, all he cares about are his shares are his shares and, and, and the bribes. The, the allegation now is very strong that Le Malilea Lama Sofa was about 40 million US dollars. That's the real story that I'm hearing. And, I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and, and, and I'm, I'm really, you know, we don't have a country like Sisodwala. We don't have police, we don't have hawks, we don't have anything. So from what I'm hearing is that he received 40 million US dollars in cash from his friends, Abu Bill Gates, Nabo, Jeff Bezos, so that George Nizot, Soros. There's Bezos and there's Soros. There's Jeff think, Bezos think, think, and George Soros. Oh, Jeff Bezos. There's the, Jeff Bezos. Uh, yeah, they're lama billionaires. Sorry, the, 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 George, the, George, the, um, George Bezos in South Africa has passed on. I think he was a lawyer. Yeah, yeah, he was Sorry. in the he was a constitutional court George judge. Soros, you know, Jeff, Jeff Bezos. Bezos Jeff okay. Bezos. Yeah. Amazon. That that click that click abangan baga 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 the ANC actually we must not say abangan baga Cyril because they are also friends. Zaga Tabombegi. Tabombegi has got very close uh, links and ties with the Rothschilds and the Oppenheimers. Right, all of them actually, all of them. There isn't even a single one who never had that 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 close tie, uh, that close relationship with these uh, white uh, European um, billionaires and globalists. Apparently, he took he, he was given forty million U.S. dollars, and to um, to and also to create to help create the crisis for Africa because they needed South Africa to lead so that the economic lockdowns can be allowed across Africa, but South Africa needed to lead, so that's the story. So what I'm saying is, I can't respect, you know what, unfortunately, as a woman, right, especially a black woman, when we get into a position of authority, because we are the, 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 the dejected, because we and our children are the, the oppressed, the violated, we have no choice but to actually work hard and, and do the right thing. If we don't do it, the country is going. I'm a daughter, as you said. You don't really care. You don't even think about, oh my goodness, what, where, where am I going to be in my old age? Should I not be trying to build a home? And then, because I'm going to be living in a community as a very old man, should I not be trying to contribute towards the community so that I've got a safety net when I'm old and I can live in a safe area. No, you eat as much as you can, rape as much as you can, cheat as much as you can, lie as much as you can. And of course, I'm generalizing, there are men who are good, who don't do those things, but there are few. 
there are like there are few 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 mfuno even no baba mangeke ngimbali lapho kule list even though i like him and i love him he's my dad i love him ngisacela zivale if possible yes mandisa thank you so much for joining us um yeah a lot of passion there and a lot of things that we all need to think about and consider um i had a follow up question but i guess we'll discuss it another time of if there are any real good strong intelligent black women that can lead not the country at the highest level but in various Everywhere. spaces there are many you know so there are many but thank you very much um i look forward to engaging with you again soon um and with this platform here i think just for me i know you're passionate about growing your own food etc mm mm-hmm. i was walking in a lifestyle center here in joburg and i was just looking at the trees the little trees fruit trees 280 rand this was in a lonely white neighborhood so i can imagine in other spaces they probably cheaper i always tell people especially i want to look shin go and plant fruit trees you I never have to be hungry now and i've got figs beautiful no more you must come oh you don't eat veggies sorry how anyways thank you we're out <laughs>